All right, I almost didn't make it, but I made it. <coughs> flu and all, and uh, I'm back with the flu, but I'll talk about that later. Good afternoon and good evening and welcome uh, to it. I couldn't believe I got out of bed like 30 minutes ago. <coughs> and my guest was traveling all the way to somewhere else to be on, so I had to, have to come on. This is an important discussion tonight that we've been wanting to have for a while. So yeah, <coughs> let's try and uh, do this. Welcome to it. It's been a rough day for me. Weather was shit as well. Uh, it doesn't have to pause. Uh, but I'm here. I'm alive and kicking. Well, barely kicking, but kicking. Um, log on, log in. It's 8 o'clock. I'm live. I couldn't go live at 12 o'clock because I was not well. Nizam Ghani, I'm in your area. The weekend, dude. Calvin Nagia, Melvin Lawrence, Martin, Melvin Lawrence. Good evening and welcome. <coughs> Let me try and get myself dialed up so I can get my energy flowing. I sent for a cheese sandwich and a coffee. That's my supper because, um, yeah, maybe I need to have something in my tummy. I hope my guest doesn't mind me having a sandwich while I'm talking. I know it's rude, but <coughs> Lameshni says, uh, sorry about the feeling of the throat. Had some cough mixture. Hopefully, it'll help me get me through. Um, right, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to it. Uh, it's, the mid, it's the late night report. Uh, hi, Becky Keller out. Uh, what you mean, Becky Keller out? Uh, Iqbal Gafur, how are you? <coughs> and uh, welcome to it. I'm a bit disorientated, but forgive me. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I've been, uh, I'm back with the illness. I had a flu since last week, and I recovered. And two, three days ago, the wife had the flu. And then she said to me, don't sleep with me, I got the flu. How okay, can I not sleep with my wife? You know, even when her back is turned... You know, those are choices. So anyway, now I'm like back with the flu. Um, so yeah, what to do? Uh, <clears throat> that's how it uh, goes. Not that I slept today, anything happened really. She turned it back on me, but still. Um, there's a story for another day. Listen, guys, let me just tell you this. And for the DA, I know a lot of DA supporters might be very upset with me. Today, I, I made a post out. And uh, if my guests would allow me, let me just, let me just, let me just, in terms of the political landscape, I must be clear and and, and, and where I am. And, and I, I'm in no way dissing the DA. In fact, I've been a supporter of the DA in terms of being the biggest, being the biggest uh, opposition party. And, and many of you <coughs> who watch my platform, you might, you would have known that I was a proponent of the DA. But in the last couple of weeks, I had to have a whole mindset or see how can we change things around. And and in many ways, maybe the DA is its own worst enemy. By the way, a lot of guys, and I use the Western Cape as a benchmark for what the DA can achieve. I must tell you that. I think if they're in governance, they can do a lot, as in the Western Cape. The problem I'm talking about in is in KZN, where I don't feel they're going to overturn, and there's too many other parties at play, and they're not succeeding here. So I just said, I said not all, I didn't say all the councillors, so please get me, please understand me correctly. There are a lot of, and, and maybe other parties will do the same. All I'm saying for, in, in the likes of Chatsworth and Phoenix and the Indian, Indian probably Indian areas I know about, I'm just saying, let's let's try a change. Let's, it's KZN. I, I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still a big supporter of the majority being a big party to canvas. I, I must be clear about that. And by the way, I tried to make contact with the DA last week to discuss my, my, my this, and, and of course they didn't, uh, unfortunately, Nicole couldn't get to see me to ask them, you know, what what difference can you do? And uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's my stance. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm Like someone is saying, DA is law best bet. Yes, in many ways. But I just, you know. Uh, Sunil is saying, people are posting uh, hate, nasty comments. Well, maybe the tabloid needs to uh, be able to convince them. Emiliano says Zulu provinces. I'm, yeah, Western Cape is just a different province. So I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking maybe if that's not going to work, there's just too much of stuff about the DA that people are saying here. So maybe just try something different. So let me be clear to the DA. I'm not dissing you in any way. The fact that you have councillors not doing the work is not necessarily your fault entirely. You know, I, I come from an area where councillors are just useless. So I'm just saying let's. 
let's try something different. Let's just let's just try something. That's that's my anyway, guys. We've got an important conversation tonight. Uh, finally, um, the family of the accused, and you know, I've been heavily involved in the Phoenix issue and uh, trying to help the help the guys there. Uh, I was one of the first people to start talking about the guys who were arrested when nobody wanted to talk about them because they were the parias of uh, the situation. They were the ones taking the rap. And many of us, <clears throat> let me not say many, 90% of us prefer to leave them as the parias, let them take the rap, and we walk away. That, uh, examine your own mind <clears throat> and understand you as well could have done that. Oh, they, and even today, I talk with people as, yeah, but, you know, those guys, they committed it. What, what, you know, in their mindset, even they are at fault. They are, they committed the murders. They attempted murders. And while it might be true for a lot of people, there are still others who did not do it. And how do you, only when, whoever I'm talking with, make them understand what if it was you standing at a garage or a shop and somebody got murdered down the road but the footage showed you in the vicinity and then you get arrested. Let me just put you in the picture. You was watching now. You're watching me tonight. Suddenly the police knock on your door. They barge into your house. They pick you up, put you in the van and you're in jail. You are arrested. Can you, can you even figure that out? Do you want to accept that? That you're in jail. Normal person like you. These are normal people. Live normal lives. On that day of July 12, 13, 14, they went out onto the street to try and protect themselves. Some people committed some heinous acts. There are videos, they will be caught. Others were just in the vicinity. Right? So, wrong place, wrong time. So, consider you a family guy, having your supper, watching me with your children, then suddenly, <coughs> the police are in there, and uh, you are arrested, and quite violently arrested in some cases. And, uh, put the tea in the coffee, say, please, friend. Uh, yeah, so my son will bring me some tea and coffee. True case, you took the owners. Well, so I need you guys to a lot of them. I need you guys to understand that. Uh, eh? Tea and coffee. I said, uh, yeah. So innocent bystanders. So that was happened to a lot of people, and uh, I got my sandwich. By the way, I'm not, I'm, I don't. I'm gonna tell uh, this thing that uh, this is my cheese sandwich. So I'm not sure if she don't mind. I'm going to chew while she's there. Uh, I don't have a fork and knife as well, but uh, I'm going to try and have it. Uh, sorry, I'm really battling. Uh, trying to warm the throat up. So yes, guys, let's try and understand what is happening. And uh, I have a family group going. I have a task team going. And let me just say, talk about the finances. What's happening is I'm getting caught up in, in some politics in the area and I'm trying to stay away from the politics. Uh, so I'm here to raise funds, which are we doing? We're raising funds in our small town. By the way, my task team has got about five members. I keep forgetting five members, four females, oh, six members, four females, two males. I think that's what it is. And we are doing our best to try and do it. But you get still people are digging my ass, digging other people's ass and, and trying to find out what we're doing with the money, where we're putting the money and all of that. So let me be clear. I set it up with my task team. We have a group of families that we are helping and we take we take instructions from nobody. We are accountable to nobody outside the group. We are accountable to the family members. And in three months time, when there's an audit done and it seemed that 5,000 Dan is missing, then Karo Chara will be the one to take full responsibility. So you can nail me to the post. You can put my hands up there and you can nail me. You can do whatever you want. That's fine. Until then, shut your ass. If you didn't contribute, park Dom. When the audit comes out, then you see where we've used the money. For now, <clears throat> what we need and what we'll be concentrating on, raising funds. So when nine accused need a bail of 6,000 Rand, nine sixes are 54. 54,000 Rand will need to be, and there are 29 accused, by the way. So no, I'm saying that all of them need bail, but just to put things in perspective. All right. So it's been a long time coming. We want to chat to someone who's going to give you a really great idea of what's happened. This is a family member I'm bringing on. Her name is Chantal. I think it's Chantal. We'll get her on. Let's check, check her sound. Let's get her on. Right. Yeah, she's on. So if you can just do a quick sound check, darling, Chantal. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Oh, wow. Great. That's the cleanest and best sound I've had for a while from a guest. It was so clear. Uh, and, and, and your audio is absolutely awesome. Thank you. Firstly, 
Thank you so much. I know you had load shedding. You had to run to another place and uh, try and be here, which is great. <clears throat> Hence, when I heard you running to another place, I said, I've got to get out of bed. Because when you, I was still in bed when you were texting. It just 30 minutes ago, I got out of bed. And uh, uh, I had to do this feed with you. So, yeah. So, let's just say, first of all, you are a family member of one of the queues. Am I right? That's correct. So, Chantal, we're going to discuss quite a few things, but at the outset, you as a person similar to me, being involved in the height of the unrest, can you try firstly to put us in the picture of what you felt during that period when your family member went out on the road or you went out? What, what did you go through? Is it similar to what I went through, others went through? What was your experience? Casey, I think everybody's difference, uh, experiences were different. And uh, for me personally, um, I think it was the most devastating thing that could have ever happened to to um, to KZN. Um, it instilled a lot of fear into everybody, especially uh, watching um, on national television the destruction that was taking place. And automatically, your defensive forces as a human being would kick in. So it was, I would say, it was an ex it was it was something that was like out of a movie scene. It was like I never dreamed we'd ever experience something like this in Phoenix. Um, especially it, where it started on the N3 where the trucks were getting torched that, that Thursday. And um, threats started coming in. Um, I mean, there were, there were voice notes going around uh, threatening uh, the, the Phoenix uh, residents that they were going to get killed um, and uh, certain things were going to happen to them. Um, you know, um, I think at that time, there were a million things going through our minds. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that you could never be prepared for. You know, and I think, and I think just to, to further iterate on that, um, I mean, you, we were in situations where um, we had friends from other communities, uh, Black African friends who, who sent us messages, who called us out of concern and, and said, you know what, you're my friends. Um, I, I care about you guys. Get out of Phoenix. Um, if you had to experience something like that, um, what would you do? We, uh, well, personally, I, I, I had a getaway bag packed um, with all personal documents. Um, my entire family was ready to flee our home in case a petrol bomb uh, landed on our <coughs> roofs. So how the malls so, went up in flames. So Chantal, just, just to get in there, let's, let's talk about that because you know that the trolls are watching us and you know people will be telling us that we are protecting murderers. We know they're watching, right? But from the other point of view, which you're trying to give, which they may not understand. Yes, we get that somebody is saying, oh, you guys did this. You didn't. So the common narrative coming out is that they were innocent people walking on the street and then you went and attacked them. Right? I will address that, by the way. But you are bringing out a point which the media hasn't brought out. Nobody's brought out. When you're the community hearing the voice notes, hearing the threats and having your domestics come to you and say something is being planned, things are happening. And they are of concern. I tell you to please be wary. A notice is coming from the informal settlement. From, obviously, we had good contact with them because we know people who are, who are working, living with us, or working with us, saying things are happening. That fear, and let me tell you something, and I use this example uh, today, or even yesterday, I can't remember. Forget having blacks, because when you say blacks, it becomes uh, racist, right? So you're living in a community. The next door community are Mexicans. Let's call them Mexicans, because for the sake of the argument, it's better. You hear the Mexicans are coming to attack you. You hear the Mexicans want to kill you. You hear the Mexicans want to burn your house down. And then when you see three Mexicans walking at nine o'clock in the night, you will react to those three Mexicans because they're not supposed to be there. And you, you now fear. So what the public want us to say, well, the three Mexicans are walking at nine o'clock in the night. Why are you even uh, addressing them? You're racially profiling them. And uh, then you are a racist. But if you take all things into consideration, which is we, even me, I admitted this. If at nine o'clock in the night, I saw three black guys walking down our street, our antenna straightly went up because we know they sent scouts into the area. We know they sent people trying to. So it's a very difficult situation which people on the outside won't understand unless you are feeling that fear. Uh, if, if, uh, 100% Casey, if you never lived in Phoenix, you would never know what it felt like. You could be sitting in Kauteng and assuming that or speculating what's happening, but we experienced it firsthand. And it was, this, as I explained, it was, it was 
a life-threatening experience. Phoenix was under attack. That, uh, that I have absolutely no doubt about that. And I think it's a very, very important. They say, they say don't dwell on the past, but, but the past makes a future. Um, if, um, if this didn't happen, we wouldn't be sitting in the current situation that we're sitting in right now. And I think it's very important that um, there's a time where I think right now we need to, we need to address this. Um, it still hasn't been addressed. And for me personally, um, it, as a resident of, of Phoenix, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't leave us in a good space. I mean, it's not just the, the accused that are, that are going through this trauma, together with it are the families and the people that reside here. So um, I honestly feel that they should be, I mean, everyone lost in the looting and I sympathize with everyone that experienced losses, but um, we gotta be fair. We gotta use um, a, a fair judgment when we when we're saying um, and when we're drawing, uh, drawing conclusions. Um, I always say to people, social media can ruin your life. Um, you need to, um, when you go onto social media, you need to take, ask yourself, and what, are, what am I reading? And what I'm reading, is it correct? I, am I, have, I, have I gone and verified this with, with the source? Um, it's a, a lot so of the... Just, the just, just, just to come in there and go back into, in terms of your family. I know yes. my wife, when I was in the street, my son was with me, he was 15 years old at the time, I think. And the family, even who are not on the road, are going through another type of trauma, hearing gunshots on the road and not knowing what your loved one, whether they've gone on the road, whether they'll even come back. Nobody speaks about that. or Not, not much is given to that. 100%. So, so, the, so the, the actual, the actual um, uh, fear started coming in on that Sunday night. So I don't know how many of you actually remember. Um, it was the, the, the 11th of July. And there were gunshots throughout the night uh, coming from Industrial Park. Um, uh, the looters were heading towards Spa DC. They were they were attempting to loot Spa DC, and that entire night, um, I couldn't sleep because the gunshots were that persistent, and I could hear the the, the loud voices of the of the protesters or wherever they were um, that were advancing uh, in Industrial Park. And um, at that point, we you know I don't think we realized the seriousness of it. But it, it, it started, every day was one new development. And by the next, by the next day, there was, there was extreme, there was extreme panic. Um, I mean, personally, I, we, even, even the ladies, the ladies, the men, everyone was prepared to, to, to guard their homes and what they had worked for, for the last, some people are in Phoenix for the last 40 or 50 years. Um, it was not about, um, I'm attacking somebody because of their race. I'm protecting what I've worked for my entire life. Um, you burn down a building, you burn down a mall. Um, there's going to be nothing left there beside ashes. Um, it, it was about that. I mean, people have young children. They were, they were people living alone, people, old people that, that had no one to rely on. Um, and we couldn't place reliance on SAPs at that time. Um, they were the ill-equipped to, to deal with the situation. It was a situation that, that, that could have been brought quickly under control, in my opinion. I mean, we've got the, one of the best armies in, on the continent. Um, that's what we train our army to do. We train our army to um, react to situations like this if, if SAPs can't handle it. Uh, I mean, people lost their lives while looting. Um, how devastating is that? I sympathize with those families. Uh, we need justice for them as well. I, I mean, it, um, we, as I said, it could have been prevented. Those lives... Could have been prevented and and the reason why i'm going back <coughs> focusing on on that as well because this is where our trauma started i would our in the emotional trauma um and the stress that we experienced as residents is, is unexplainable I, I can't give you words to say the <clears throat> panic that i went into my, my, yeah, my I family just, I, just, I just want to bring in a great point i just want to bring in as someone is saying i was talking about the mexicans and a lot of people on the outside don't understand and i also may not have understood it unless I was in the zone knowing what's happening. When I was in Chatswood at the time and this was happening, it was a standoff between the black community and in, because we are an Indian township and a black township, it was a, let us make no bones about it. Am I right? The black, black settlement was your enemy. Can we call that it was the enemy? Am I right? At that time, yes. Yes, at that time, they were the ones coming. We're talking predominantly Indian, predominantly black. That's why we're saying that. In our minds, in our in our fear, that was the enemy. And when I was sitting in the shopping center, 
they would send down like three or four uh, ladies walking down, whatever. And then I was told by the guys on the ground, be careful, these are not just innocent people, they are scouts. They're coming to scout the area, coming to see how many people are on duty, what to do before they send in. I don't think others are realizing, when I say others, people on the outside understand, that it was almost yeah. like warfare. They were sending people to scout and normal black ladies just walking down like nothing, but there are eyes and ears for people who are coming, want to come into the area. Did you experience that as well? Uh, uh, not, not so much in our area, um, but but yes, there were those sets. It, it, it wasn't, as I said, it wasn't about um, a specific race. It was about the situation that we're, we were in at that time. I yes. mean, it could take a small group of people that could come and start burning. It, di it didn't necessarily mean they had to come in a large group. So I think that part we want to clear out as well. I think it's also important for, for, for everyone to reflect on the fact that the contents of some of those voice notes um, there were things spoken about meetings that were held amongst other areas and how they plotted to attack us and kill us. And um, uh, I mean, how do we justify these things? How do we just overlook these things? Even even in in the ter in in terms of the judgments that are that are being passed, do we just overlook what happened and do we just uh, turn a blind blind eye on this and move on from here? Um, I, I really don't think we can do that. Um, I really think that, um, it, as I said, must be addressed. We need to talk about it. Um, we don't want to live in a, in a, in a, in a community uh, where it's, it's, it's broken. I mean, we never had issues before. We've had very good relations with our neighboring uh, communities. Um, and even, so even only, until I just, now... It's I just want to, I just want to, I was going to ask you that question, but let me lead you into that question. <clears throat> You've obviously been a resident of Phoenix for a long time, I assume. Bombay, yes. uh, Amor, what... Prior to July 11th, what, what was the relationship between the... Inf and you have about three or four informal settlements. Uh, it's different from chat. The dynamics are different, uh, much different. It's more open in terms of uh, access. Like chat has got, if you're going into informal settlement, it's almost like a way in and a way out, two areas. But Phoenix is more, more open sort of thing. What was your relationship with, or the general public's relationship with the informal settlement before July 12th, July 11th? It was a normal relationship. There was no tension. There was no tension at all. Um, a lot of people come to Phoenix to go to school, to go to work, or they, they work for the people in the area. And uh, even now as well, if you drive around Phoenix, there's actually no tension at all. Everyone's, I think everything's pretty much back to normal. Um, you know, so that it, it, that's why I said it's very important what we see in the media. We cannot just draw conclusions because I'm seeing that happen very often. It's like, if my neighbor said this was red, then I'm going to say it's red as well. Uh, we cannot operate like that as a society. Everyone's educated here. We know what's right and wrong. Um, we need to use judgment. You need to use discussion. Because if we are all going to build on the narrative that I hate you because you are a certain race, then we're going to instill that in, every, in the current situation. <clears throat> never, it's never going to change. And then our children yeah, and so the children to come. So when you agree that, I mean, I saw it for myself, it was, let's say, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. By Thursday, people from the informal settlement were shopping at the Phoenix Plaza, and then it's business as usual. Where, yes. where were the, where, it is so clear, and I did the same video at Chatsworth Center, that by the Thursday, the so-called enemy were now walking side by side with the residents of Phoenix. And, and what people don't realize, how much it took for us as a people the night before any person who was considered black was an enemy. And then suddenly the next day you're walking side by side. I think that speaks for us as a people and yes. how we managed to move on and accept. They don't understand like what you say, the fear we had of any black person at that point and understand why we're saying this in the context. Yes. And then suddenly the next day you walk side by side with, with the similar people from that area, but you have, you, you have to fear nothing and you have to go on and life did go on. And that's currently happening now. If you walk into a supermarket in Phoenix, you side by side with every other race group. Um, even at the time when I don't know if you you, know, you guys must have heard the the, the the thousands of loaves of bread that were coming from Kauteng, because we because like after the the unrest on on the Monday, we woke up to no bread the next day. Everyone was scuffling around. Bread ran out. Queues were crazy. Don't don't forget those days. Those days are very important days for us to reflect on. They then um, it was like a few days later, and then uh, Kauteng got together and started sending us bread. And amongst the distribution, there was no discrimination. Um, 
everyone that needed it. Remember, people in every race group suffered and didn't have bread at that time. And um, when we distributed, it was for everybody. It, you know, it tells you something that it's just a small group of people that wanted this chaos. And we now, as, as communities on either side, um, have to stand together and not allow this division to take place. I think that, that that's very important. I think, and I think that's, that's, that's exactly yeah. the mainstream yes. media yes. and our powers that be want to put Phoenix as black against Indians when that's the furthest thing from the truth. No, it's really not the case. It's really not the case. That's just the, as I said, opinions of a few people. We, if we breathe on that opinion, it's going to start becoming a narrative. We, it's the responsibility of, of everyone to stop that narrative from growing further. We have a responsibility to do it. And it's, as I said, certain people, um, if they feel if they need to solve a problem, they need to resort to violence. Um, you don't have to resort to violence. There's many other ways that you need to do it. But obviously, some people have issues. There are issues um, in their minds, or, or they're troubled, or they have an external force that's driving them to do it. So there's a lot of social ills that have happened with the Andes that we also need to take into account. But at the same time, it's affected everyone, every single person. And well, I to think me, right, to me, what I want right? to say is that, yeah, to me, what I want to say is, sorry, Raisa, as I, I should tell, is that what I want to uh, be able to do is uh, say that I don't think we've been lambasted on, 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 on mainstream media, but if someone wants to come and tell our story, that we could go from such fear to walking hand in hand with someone, it speaks a lot about our people and our culture and that we, we've managed to move on. Even now in, in the malls, there is nothing about July unrest that affects us. We continue as normal. We've moved on to understand that these people were instigated. They were instigators. They were troublemakers who tried to do it. We've made peace with that and we're moving on. None of us, I think, in our community, we don't see any grudge attacks. We don't see any attacks out of the ordinary. We don't see that. We've just moved on. I think the important question we need to ask ourselves, especially as Phoenix residents, why did we stand together? Why did we stand together? Why <clears throat> did come out on the road and and protect what you had why at that time we stood united why because we had to do it we had no other choice and i think what i also want to say is look back at phoenix a lot of people say oh there's no losing <coughs> happened nothing happened in phoenix let me just remind you that let's take mount edgecombe plaza for example it was protected by who syndicates and he's in vip they were protecting mount edgecombe plaza check star supermarket was protected by the locals that, that lived around the Indian unit too. Um, we had uh, Sheikh Center, we have had Kiss Basad. They're all small little shops that are in the area. Um, then, um, but we had uh, the Gulam supermarket there in West Ham that was looted. Please guys, you can also come in here. And um, it was burnt, looted, apparently beyond uh, recognition it was burnt. Um, so, and I mean, look at the Phoenix Plaza, it still stands today. Phoenix Plaza was threatened to be destroyed and looted like you cannot believe. And what did Phoenix residents say? They're going to protect Phoenix Plaza with their lives. And yes, Phoenix Plaza still stands because the community stood together and, and protected. And the, and the amazing thing is <clears throat> the very same people who wanted to destroy those shops are shopping there the next day for bread and milk. Yes. So let's be realistic. I mean, look at look at what happened to Brit City Mall. Now the people got to take two taxis, even even um, in the Sharcross Mall, um, they got to take two taxis to get to where they need to go. They've inconvenienced their own people that live around there. So we gotta be, we gotta be realistic. We cannot just take things, uh, shove it under the carpet, and then we sit with this big problem that we're sitting now with, uh, which is the Phoenix accused and all the people that lost their lives. Um, there was a driving force. And even now, there's still a driving force to what the families are going through, the families of the accused, the families of the victims. Um, we're going through a tough time, guys. We're going through a hell. Um, you know, it's, it, it takes a lot of courage and guts to, well, to talk about let me, it. Not, let, let, me start you know, then, let me start then bringing to that, uh, Chantal. You are a family member of one of the accused. Um, we'll try to give too much of details, but when your family member was accused, how was it done? Was it, are we heard bad stories of of heavy handedness. We've had uh, stories of racism when uh, black police officers cheated the Indian families. These are stories I heard. 
Um, I'm not sure what you went through and your family. Can you just want to share that part? The actual, let's start from there. We're going to go through the process, the actual arrest and how that happened. Do you have some knowledge of that? So from what we've gathered, the, uh, and I think in a lot of areas as well, the actual arrest was, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't done, in, in my opinion, um, according to, to lawfulness or, or how it should have been carried out. Um, I mean, there were, there were names shouted out in, in certain areas, and based on those names, people were picked up. Uh, people were picked up under, um, well, in our case, under false pretenses, um, saying, uh, hey, mister, you, you're getting arrested for assault, and we're taking you into the station. You go into the station, a few hours later, you're interrogated, you're shown a video, are you there? Can you identify the people that are here? Um, if not, you're, if, you're, if you have a firearm, it's confiscated. Automatically, if you're showing a firearm, oh, now your charge is getting moved to attempted murder. So the, the, the obviously, uh, the way in which the arrests were done was, was, not, was not ethical. A lot of people are laymen to the law. They don't understand when they're getting arrested, what's their rights, um, you know, and usually it's, you need evidence in order to arrest somebody. Um, and these things were done in a very, you know, in a very, I would say, a very devious way. Um, well, I think the word is heavy-handed. Uh, they were heavy-handed in their approach. And in many ways, I heard stories of mainly black police officers attacking, uh, coming for Indian to arrest them. I heard of racial slurs being sent out. Obviously, these are allegations. Only, only after the case we will hear where people will come forward because they're scared. They're scared to say these things. Look, it's human nature. I'm going to say this to those who are listening. The fact that it didn't happen or you think it happened, no. Let's go back to the Mexicans. If the Mexicans attacked you and your family and whatever, and you went to arrest them, you're not going to say, oh, please come with me, put your hands out, let's do this. You're going to be heavy-handed because you attacked my family. I understand that. And, and, it, and it happened. It's a reality. That if, if I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a person and I'm going to arrest a Mexican who I know killed my family or killed my people, I'm not going to treat him with kid gloves. I'm going to be heavy-handed with him. And it's human nature. The fact that I don't think people can deny it happened. So I've been hearing stories of that. And, and clearly, uh, it, there must be some merit to that um, story. But anyway, you said so. They were arrested. So from that time, uh, your accused have been more than um, how many days in jail now? Close to 85 days. Since the time of the arrest? Correct. So normal citizen taken in. Can I ask you... Uh, I think when they were arrested, they were shown some sort of videos or whatever. In the terms of yes. the people you know, what inf what uh, information or evidence did they have and currently have, according to you? There's no evidence. A lot of it is pointing out from witnesses that what what so-called witnesses are saying. So um, you know, as you know, with the, with the, with, with regards so wait, to let's, the, let's, the court, let's backtrack. Let's backtrack for people to know what's the charge against your family member. What's the charge? Charges attempted, or charge? a, attempted, attempted murder and malicious damage to property. So in, so order, those, in, order, to have, in order to have a chance, a charge of attempted murder, I should have somebody telling me I'm banging someone, hitting someone with a hammer to such an extent they might die but didn't die, <coughs> like assault and then attempted murder because you didn't die but attempted to murder you. <coughs> is that is that evidence clear or does it show your family member doing such a thing? Or anyway. No, there's no, there's no video, uh, there's no video evidence, or uh, they weren't even there in the first place. Yeah. So, so you know, people are gonna say everybody's innocent. Your uncle is innocent. He's innocent. Everybody's innocent. Everybody's arrested is innocent, right? We we understand that. Everyone's gonna say I didn't do it, and there are people who did do did do acts. We, we're not gonna run away from that. But the story you're telling me is a story I'm hearing from numerous other people that. They were found by video footage to be in the vicinity. But to date of the people I know, none of them are caught in the act or doing anything. Do you concur with that? Correct. I think the, bo the bottom line here, and maybe we all must understand, is how a bail application works. Um, if you held for more, for, for you, you can't be held for more than 48 hours <coughs> if, they, if, there's, if they don't have sufficient... Uh, evidence against you. So what would have happened with most of them is they would have been arrested. They would have um, appeared, um, uh, well, you get charged within 48 hours. You would have appeared uh, in court after the 48 hours. And 
if there is not enough evidence against you you should you should have, you should go out on bail that's what what that's what happens in a normal circumstance but this was obviously very abnormal and it's been continuing like this for the last six appearances and it simply has not been making sense from um from from a from a constitution and a law perspective i mean you cannot use the same excuse on every single case and say that uh the community says that the perpetrator should be behind bars the community says this and the community says that since when do people in our community now actually um make the yeah, rules so let's, and laws let's, let's and, get, i understand what yeah. you're saying this goes slowly for the people to understand so you are right in saying what we should know is that if you are arrested 48 hours you should you should appear before a court get your bail or whatever and move on within a couple of days maybe a week i mean a lot of them are sitting i mean i think jitendra's crew of the three are uh, more than 90 94 95 days uh, something like that in in incarceration and i think uh, what i also want to say casey is it's i'm not saying that an investigation should not be should not take place um yes an investigation should be carried out if it needs to be but it should be done in all fairness now even if a person does get bail this this is still going to be a trial now we saying let the trial continue but don't deprive them of their right to bail why why is it that every case is been uh, been been treated the same uh, there's no reasonability i mean people that have the medical conditions and so forth are not even say been taken into consideration i mean with all due respect to our courts we've got a lot of respect for our courts and constitution i mean we've got one of the we've got the best constitution in the world but obviously we're not seeing that come around and Um, as a family member, not, as a resident, yeah. yes, the constitution is not taking not seeing, itself out because it seems no, that no, these guys, I mean, ninety some odd days, ninety some odd days in incarceration seems not even a bit extreme. There's something wrong. The, the narrative really, coming out, and the thought process is it, that these guys are being victimized. They're being pushed into the corner. They're being they're being treated in a different way because they are Indian people. That hey, and. the fact of the matter is why we saying why we formed the group justice for the phoenix accused is not because and i think you'll agree with us we're not saying they are an innocent all we want is a fair process and i think yes, what you're saying correct. is right that if your uncle if they have evidence against him it's like a guy who shot his wife this i use my example the guy shot his wife right yes judge him you got the evidence you got the smoking gun you got the uh, blood sample whatever give him bail as far as i know how you deny bail if you're a flight risk that you can skip yes. the country if you do not have a fixed address they can't catch you right those are the two main criteria to deny bail as far as every attorney i spoke to if you find that these things are in, are in place afford the bail and come to court and you will go to trial in trial we will find you guilty or not guilty i'm that's what you're saying i'm right that's how it should have played itself out that's correct and then you know you'll get the people of the opinion that will say you know what it's a court matter i cannot comment but i think what i also want to bring out is that because these um appearances of this um, well it's not even a trial as yet but it's been rolling out in this fashion it's creating a lot of undue stress on the family and i think that's what the courts don't understand is that we've got old people that that live in our homes we've got old grandparents that live there they're concerned about their sons and or their grandsons and it's not it's not it's not a problem well on their health further to that um the breadwinners they they a lot of them are working class they've got responsibilities um in all fairness um uh, you know we saying the the law must take its course but as i said it's not it's not rolling out in the in in the fashion that it should so bail, i mean as it is well. yeah bail as well how you, how the judge gives out bail or should i is like for example Jackie Shandu used the fact that he's got two children who will be yet he doesn't even look after his children as another story altogether but they use those mitigating factors to say why he should be released go back so we have people with medical conditions we have breadwinners those are all conditions that will play on the court and say listen we have evidence circumstantial evidence we should release you go out continue living come back to these days why that's obviously yeah, done yeah you obviously going to get bail conditions so So, so that's that's why it's really raising all these alarm bells and it's raising all these frustrations and and it's and it's almost like you want it, i think now the families of the accused have been very patient in the sense that we've been watching these cases very carefully we obviously 
um, have have been um, communicating with each other, and it's the same thing happening over and over again. It's like there's no credibility in what's happening. Um, all are painted with the same brush. All are giving that right, same so let judgment. Me, let me just ask you, uh, Shatya. Uh, let me just ask you this question here. Yeah. Um, let's go back to your family and you. The emotional stress of having someone. I can't imagine, Chantal, that uh, my son is in jail. Somebody who was with me yesterday, playing with me, sitting in my room, suddenly is in an environment that I can't understand. Seeing them in the court, in the dock for once, cries out for food. Early on, allegations of abuse in the correctional facility. The family, obviously, whether it's your uncle, his wife or daughter, I don't know how close you are to them. Talk us through that. That sort of how are we, how are they coping with that, and how <laughs> is the and how is the and how is the inmate or the the, the the person coping on who hasn't not used to the structure? What's the surely that must have a lot of effect on the family and that member? I think it's been very very traumatic for us. It's brought up, uh, you know, we emotional every day. We're sitting on the edge, especially the days when they appear in court. It's like we feel that that day just doesn't end, and then sometimes there's delays in courts. And it's like you're holding your heart in your hands. It's it's the worst feeling in the world, especially when you know that your family, you know deep down, your family member is innocent. Um, if you look at the the some, you know, we know the caliber of our family, you know. And um, most Indian people are, you know, I, I would speak for myself. Most people are, are passive. Uh, we, you know, we don't just automatically would resort to something drastic, unless if it's life threatening. And it, you know, it's it's been um you know it's it's brought up feelings and emotion of sometimes you feeling you're feeling anger and you're feeling this intense emotion where you just want to go and scream outside the court you just want to do something drastic yeah, yeah. but you know we we're not built like this our culture is not to behave in that manner we 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 we're trying as much to comply with the courts but you know, we just feel like we've been failed. We've been failed all the way. And, you know, it, I think for this, this weekend that passed, it was um, an emotional roller coaster for every family of the accused. We, it's, um, when we heard of Jitendra's death, it was like a funeral in, in my home. We felt for that family. It was every heart and ache that we felt for them. Um, you know, he, it, it should have never been that way. It could have been prevented, you know, no matter what it is. Um, and, you know, it was sad to I mean, see some of... Let's look, at, let's look at Jitendra's case. Jitendra, according to the article and according to whatever happened, the evidence, as you said, against him was minimal to nothing. And he's 90 some odd days in... And people have commented, I mean, Jackie Shandu says, one settler, one bullet, one Indian, one bullet... He could inspire an entire nation of people to kill. In fact, the fact that Jackie Chandra said one Indian, one bullet, that message could still be going out to people and people could be doing it because he's incited with this hate. But Jackie Chandra is out on bail he's, and he's continuing his same rhetoric of anti-Indian rhetoric. And then we have a guy like Jitendra who um, is the minimal evidence against him, if that even so, and denied bail, kept in incarceration. And the poor guy dies in incarceration. I mean, the, what the family, I'm glad I went to visit his family and just pay my respects to his wife. But I mean, if that was, <coughs> considering an innocent person that you know, to, to, it's un, unfathomable. I think, I, I think um, what's, what's very important is that, um, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's actually what they're going through in their minds, you know, and it's, and it's what's being perceived. So right now, they're in a state where they, they've been charged for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And um, at the same time, they've got to contend with uh, the media. They've got to contend with people's opinions. It's a, it's a lot of psychological uh, impact for them. And um, how do we weigh that out? Um, how do we justify with that? Um, you know, um, we, we also need to ask ourselves, um, and, and, and this, and, and this will, will roll out in time, um, is that... How do they know that they actually, um, you know, um, correctly arrested whoever whoever they did? Clearly, I mean, I don't think any of the trials have started. So it tells us one thing that 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 evidence is is definitely lacking, um, and um, you know, it's it, it, it's concerning as as a family member. 
um a million thing goes through your mind you like uh, you know um from from well, I, I can't from a, I try to I try you know some people who are who are watching and following it and I've got the sense from others they they're not really in the situation to understand and and I keep telling them put yourself you go to court and you see your son standing in the dock and and sometimes they can't even get in the courtroom and I've heard stories of him through the gate of the van trying to ask for food food being denied just all of that is it 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 first of all the trauma on a normal person in a prison situation there must be there must be being affected psychologically part emotional and psycho the person inside let's talk about the person inside what they are going through to actually survive the situation if you're not if you're not used to it no definitely you you must know you're dealing with so many different traumas at one time and um, i mean it's you know it's it's unthinkable like um you know and especially as i said after this weekend um our concerns became even greater because now we thinking um are they healthy um has the health now from being a normal person as it started deteriorating um are they getting sufficient food um are they sleeping are they you know it's you know it's it's how can i say it's 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 mind torturing um you or you got you got to experience it um to know what you're going to this is this is the first time in our in our family that something like this has happened um you know we're not people that get involved with the law and um it it it's very it's it's disturbing it's extremely disturbing have, and have, um have, have you been to the courts on certain days and times and do you get a sense that these people are not being treated fairly that there's a there's a there's an animosity that because that's what i'm hearing that's happening in the court and when they come up to the cell or from the cell or whatever that they just not getting a, a fair rub is that 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 what you feel that like you've seen yes yes that that definitely been the case um and obviously we on the side where we 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 not um, we 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 the accused so you're on the other side of the fence so definitely your you know you're going to be looked at from a different angle you're going to be you know seen from a different angle as well so they you know we you in a case where you um um you, you know at times can be discriminated and um it's it's very sad it's 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 a very sad case my heart goes out to those families that are going through this um i know exactly what you're going through it's it's one of the the toughest time to to for whatever you're dealing with and um you know we feel your pain we feel your pain and um we know the community um you know is standing with us maybe you don't say it like you should but um we know that the majority of you are are, are with us and um we're going to get through this we're going to get through this um my heart goes out as i said especially to uh, jitendra jakison's family and um my sincere condolences to them you know um personally i feel like we failed him we failed him as um families of the accused we failed him as a community why 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 did we let this go so far you know there's something that's gone uh, terribly terribly wrong you know it's why you know i i keep asking that christian why and we, we, you know we we want answers we want answers there's so many unanswered uh, questions you know so yeah, no, you know? i'm sure it's uh... <clears throat> so as jm keys as a shireen ragam but anders didn't mean they mean just attack any black person so yeah let's let's address i know i know i got the, uh, a lot of black folk on the on the platform i'm not going to attack any of them as long as they don't attack any of us and say something stupid it's a very sensitive matter we know people died we know all of that so sometimes most of the time raisa i mean why am i keep calling this on the scene uh, she tell is that uh um uh, she this uh issue of people outside outside phoenix and chats with other provinces i wanted to cast a spurge as to what's happening uh you says yeah andres didn't mean they must just attack any black person passing in phoenix as the daily route and these people are not looting or anything so that's a common thing coming out that these guys who were walking were not just uh looting they were innocent people and i think early on for inkiza to understand we we mentioned this early on you yes. have to take into account all the threats all the voice notes all the uh, well the threats the threat so yes. as jm is i'm not sure where he's from he he can't understand what you were going through look first of all let's say it again 
people, the heinous crimes committed, we're not saying we are condoning that act. Definitely also, not. We're trying to say, understand the situation you are in, Mr. Mkiza or Mrs. Mkiza, where you are being threatened by an enemy who's night, well, almost black people that are coming for you. And when people are stopped and whatever, they're seen as the enemy. We were trying to get this message across in the best possible way, not condoning the action, but trying to understand. I'm not right, uh, Chantal, what we were saying earlier on in terms of the fear that was within the residents. Definitely. And I mean, uh, people like this gentleman here, uh, we have no hard feelings against you. Um, obviously, you're entitled to your own opinion. And uh, I think what's very important is, as I said, if you're not a resident of Phoenix or you are not under attack, you wouldn't know what it felt like. Um, and as I said, we, we still a peace-loving community and we'll continue <clears throat> to do so. I mean, following the, the death <clears throat> of Jitendra Kukuson, um, things didn't go into um, an attack mode or um, chaos. We still maintained our respect and we um, handling this uh, as, in a, in a, in as a dignified way as, as possible. Um, I, so think, I, think I, think that's, I think that's an important point to raise. And let's, make it, let's make it known. I want to call a spade a spade. We know... Yes. Uh, when, when, when communities don't like something, there's looting, there's burning, there's whatever, because they are uprised. I mean, we had an, a so-called innocent person, as we believe, die in incarceration. And as a community, we are upset, but we're not reacting and overreacting. We're still yes. working with Correct. the habits of the law. Exactly. So I think uh, it's very important. And, and Mr. Mkiza oh, or Mr. Mkiza must understand, we've seen that happen in your community where you don't like something, you take to the streets, you voice your opinion, you start, we, we, and we haven't done that. We, 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 what does that speak about us? We, we, and, oh, and and so it's, we, it's a sensitive issue, Casey. And I sympathize with those people that lost their loved, one, loved ones, uh, whether black or Indian or whoever you are. Um, you know, it, it should have <clears> never happened. And um, they, you must realize that there's a higher force that can take responsibility for this. And um, we want peace in the community. We don't want all hell to break loose again. We we got to work work together and uh, sort. Um, uh, well, there were ne there were no issues, so I don't even know where this whole narrative about uh, this person hates that person. It's, so, it's, so, it's, so, it's, so, it's also, right, I'm, I'm just, I'm just coming everywhere and yeah, saying something. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's so many platforms that we won't forgive you. You will see this. You will see that. We're coming after you. But the people in Bombay and Amorti and around there are going to work every day, living their lives. So who are these people pronouncing for those people? There are people on the outside speaking for the people of Bombay, but the people of Bombay and Amorti walk to work every day, go to Indian homes, go to the shops. And if you do videos every day, you'll see normal people living their lives, but apparently they're going to sort it out. You'll never forget this. We will come. Who are these people and why are they talking for these people? It's a very small group of people, Casey. So we must just actually just ignore them and move on. Because um, as I said, um, it's important to reflect on what happened. But we're not going to, to dwell on the, on the fact that they've said, they've said a lot of things to us um, or, and vice versa. But um, as I said, these are just opinions. These are also people that have fake accounts. So maybe they don't even actually exist. Um, we we got to be we got to be reasonable in whatever we say. So um, I think also it's we got to encourage ourselves not to become like them. Um, I think that's important. Whoever these people are, um, we we don't become like them. That that's going to be. Remember, we're going to do this in a in a peaceful way. Um, wow, you know, you know, listening to you talk, and I'm sure people have done this. What you have been through for eighty some odd days in your family, and all I can hear you preach is. Let us deal with it. Let us come out of it. I don't hear a, 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 a bit of bitterness in you, anger in you. You seem to have made peace with it. You just upset the way it's happening. But all I hear you saying is that we must work, we must work together. We must believe. Even when I was saying something, you tried to tell me, you know what? Let's forget that. And that's that's by the way is 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 brilliant. It's and it's very admirable. And, by the way. and, and you know what? I know the relevant people that are listening in that need to hear this, and I really hope that you get my message. And understand our pleas, and um, you know, change whatever decisions you decided to make, or whatever um, conclusions you want to draw on the on the, especially the Phoenix accused. Um, I'm here. I'm a family member. I'm appealing to you. Um, you know, this is not what we want. Um, look at it from all angles. Look at it from our perspective. Come and sit down with us. Have discussions with us. Hear our side of the story as well. 
um we you know um you know i looked at some of the families over this weekend and um my heart crashed my heart sank and um i was like i wish i could have helped or had the power to help each and every one of them um you know and and don't get me wrong here i'm 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 on i'm on both sides of the fence um you know everyone that that you know you must remember everyone has lost something over this time casey either they have lost a job either they have lost a business that would never reopen look at um springfield park some of the people are still sitting unemployed you've got people that lost loved ones or whichever part of the country it was um and we've all lost something we've all lost something really integral in ourselves and we need to ask ourselves where did this higher force come from um and we should never allow it to happen again because some of the people may never recover from this and and it's a reality we got to think about um you mentioned, i mean you mentioned you mentioned two things there that's important right <clears throat> firstly the fact is we are south african citizens and indians and Afri- and, and and the black african community we've always had a good relationship we and it's been shown for 160 years suddenly yes. july 12 apparently we are racist so that narrative is being no, told no. it's being spread it's the Absolutely most unreasonable or unjust thing number 1 Absolutely. And, i have and number two, i have i have i have friends who are black i have um associates that are black i have got neighbors who are black we get on like a hell on like a house on fire so that i would never ever believe throughout my schooling career throughout my days at university we and in, we interacted with uh, with each other um and it it was never that, that therefore i said it's just a few um it's a very small group of people that um maybe don't share this and um we we just need to to so, ignore that that's what i'm to saying ignore. to others i get a lot of whatsapp messages <clears throat> people go on groups you know hate groups about india they say kc go and see yes. what they're saying there i said leave them it's okay they are they they don't get too caught up with them i can tell yes. you this much the majority of black african people support us and support what's yes, happening they do they are they the trolls they leave them yes. and i'm saying this to you guys again to listen if those guys were so powerful if those idiots who said they're coming 3 months now they're still coming they're not coming they only got mouth to do things in the dark the majority of yes. people want to build south africa we want to move forward ignore them walk away from them leave those groups don't concentrate on the negative concentrate on the positives i'm sure that's what you're also preaching yes no definitely and uh, as i said it's it's also the it's it's also we want to move forward we want to move forward and we don't want to come to a stage where we 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 we, we start with this uh, bitterness or hatred story so that, so that's why i'm appealing i'm appealing to everyone that has control over the situation to you know to make this a less painful one for especially the phoenix accused families and um come come to your conclusions come to your resolution um you know we 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 not the courts and the attorneys and the advocates but it's you know it's 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 really you know unthinkable in the sense that if you don't if you haven't found evidence on our loved ones um why are they still languishing in jail you know why are they being held why are they being held um <clears throat> and stripped of their constitutional rights you know um you know we live in a democratic country everyone has a right i mean it could be could be myself that's arrested you could be arrested casey do we know our rights do we know um we you know we're learning, um, now. We're learning now. now by the way by the way even if even if the law allows you this forget the guys who are innocent even the guy who's guilty he is entitled to bail and a free trial am i right we've seen this happen it 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 happens all the time right it happens all the time Because um the way, the way it's going now is that if you're guilty you shouldn't get bail like how many murderers and hijackers out on bail the court, the bail application not about whether you're guilty or not but it seems in the court process what's happening now the evidence if it shows them to be involved then they're almost being denied bail that doesn't make sense you could be caught with a smoking gun in your hand you still get bail definitely there's instances where the person actually did the crime and and they still get bail so i think it's 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 high you know it's we we're not the ones to we we shouldn't be questioning this but um it's it's become a situation where it's abnormal it's very abnormal and um 
we therefore have come to points where we we will be questioning it. We're watching this very carefully. Um, we we obviously um, um, you know we learning every day now, and um, I, I I honestly feel that there's like a, some kind of driving force that that's um, ensuring that that this happens, uh, give or take, that um, the justice system has now been tainted or trampled over, which is which is very disrespectful because you ought to uphold the, the constitution at all times. And our, and our courts are a place that you show utmost respect uh, when you go to. Uh, so for me, it's, um, it's, it's very um, heart-wrenching to see that, that, that this is happening because this is a place where when you go to the court, you're actually going to find, you're going to find relief for both the, the accused and the victim. So if this is a place now where you can't place reliance on, um, you know, it's, it, it becomes highly crisp you know, so that, that's the position where a lot of us are sitting in. We question Chantel, I just want to ask you. So I met with you in a group. I just want so the public will come to know. Since the start of the arrest, whatever, how many organizations, groups, or people have come to offer assistance? Where do you stand? How much of assistance is really coming through? What do you need? I know we met on the weekend and we had a group. What did you think of that and what's happening there? But just as you know the others, so that they have a sense of in many ways, I believe the families were abandoned and not really given help. So maybe you can shed light on how much of help is really coming from where, what sort of help and what is really needed. It's definitely, Casey. And I, I think the effort that you and uh, other people that are putting in is highly commendable. Um, it may not be significant uh, in terms of uh, the number of people that are trying to do it, but there are people that, that are standing with us, which is very heartwarming. And, um, you know, um, I think um, it, it's definitely a source of um, uh, comfort for the families and, and knowing that um, they, <coughs> these people believe that their loved ones are innocent and until proven uh, guilty. So I think it's, it, we, should, we, should, you know, we should encourage this. Um, there should be more people um, standing uh, with us. Uh, not, uh, it, it, obviously, some people are, are, are how can I say, um, a, a bit afraid to do so. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid because no one's been um, been proven uh, guilty as yet. So we don't even know if that is even going to be the case. But um, I think what's very important is that when, the, when, when all of this transpired, we stood together as a community. And um, as a community, we should still stand together. We shouldn't leave this as an isolated matter. Um, it's a community matter, and I keep saying this. And there are people that I, I approached on a, on a personal level who um, I expected um, to do a little bit more, and and unfortunately they they shied away. And um, and I'm not here to to give to give names and um, you know um, well, embarrass anybody. The fact, but the um, the but matter, the fact, yeah, the fact of the matter is, uh, Chantal, is that, and for those of who are listening, and maybe it's you. A lot of businesses, big businesses, big businessmen, attorneys have chosen to turn and walk away because this matter is too high profile. Let's say it. Let's say it. they have chosen to walk away because there's a stigma attached to this and they don't want their name, their brand and themselves to be tainted. Did you get that from that sort of understanding? Yes. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. And... Uh... Where, where, we, where we felt that we got that kind of feeling, we, we just left them and walked away. But it leaves that sad feeling in your heart that one day that same person protected outside, or was protecting outside your, 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 your building or your, your supermarket or your road, and today you just turned a blind eye on it. And um, it's, it's easy to walk away from a situation that, that you're not in. It's easy not to feel any feelings of, of, of somebody that uh, is not related to you or, or whatever the case is. And um, I think um, that's where our, our downfalls are. I think that's where our failures are. I just, um, I just want to raise a point here. We're not uh, I just want to raise a point to blaming make the businesses. Yeah, I don't know what's coming out from Phoenix, but I'm going to tell you this what I, from what I heard or haven't heard. In fact, what I haven't heard. <clears throat> I haven't heard the Phoenix Plaza or the malls or the big business coming out and saying, you guys and your family supported us. We want to assist you. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it yet. In fact, when we are going to buy hampers, they're charging the full price. There's no discount being offered. There's no sense of the business community saying, we need to assist these people who are out on the... I mean, the guy was out on the street 
protecting Phoenix Plaza, ShopRite Checkers, the main spas, all of those things. Those shops saved a lot. <coughs> in fact, those businesses made more money in the days after the thing because there were more people coming to buy stuff. They actually benefited from this. But I feel they've, they've left them in the lurch. They, no one's willing to talk about helping any of the accused or their families. 100%. And um, I think it boils down to humanity. We sometimes, uh, I think we're all guilty of it. We lose the humanitarian spark in ourselves. But uh, I'm appealing to you, don't, uh, don't, um, don't let that get the better of you. Um, you know, we all were in this, uh, in this together in terms of protecting uh, Phoenix. If you drive around Phoenix, you'll see there was minimal damage to Phoenix. And there's a clear understanding <coughs> to that, that Phoenix was protected. We stood together and protected what we worked hard for. It didn't come easy. We struggled also. So don't forget that, guys. Don't forget that. That's a, that's a, it's a very, very crucial point that I want to put out there, is that these families are in dire, 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 dire situations at the moment, um, where be it financial, be it emotional, um, it's taken a, a huge toll on these families. Um, some of them don't even know, you know, where they lie at the end of this month. So, um, you know, that would be my message to, to everyone. Um, you know, no matter where in the country you are, no matter where in the world you are, I know there's people from other countries that are probably hearing this. And so, um, uh, Chantel, let me just cut you in there and you can, I think that you've been, I'm going to address this matter. SJM Kize is on the platform. He's listening to you, he's listening to me. I'm not going to diss him. He's, he's sort of anti what we're saying, but not anti. He's giving his, and I want to I address him on this. So he's talking about and, and it's a lived experience. It's a real experience. I'm sure you will agree with as much as I. He's talking about his own experience with Indian people, that some of them are pretending, some of them don't pretend. He, he obviously had bad experiences with Indian people and businesses he's worked in. I want to address it and you can give your input. Mr. Mkiza or Ms. Mkiza, I have no doubt that you've had bad experiences. But that's a bad experience with an employer, not necessarily an Indian. He could be a white guy. I've heard pe black people work for black people who are abused by black people. So the fact that you've had a bad experience of two, three, five, ten Indians, 20 Indians, let's make it 100 Indians, does it mean you paint the entire community based on your experiences? Because Mr. Imkize or Ms. Imkize, if you use that as a yardstick, 100 Indians abused you, so I need to hate Indians. Then, my friend, I must go to crime statistics in this country and go to my area where the black people are stealing from my yard, stole my son's bicycle, stole the windscreen wiper from my car, raped my neighbor, hijacked the person, then I must then hate black people because they are committing the crime. Does that make sense, uh, Mr. Imkiza or Ms. Imkiza? If you're no. using that example, if you are using that example of Indian people that abused you, I don't doubt it. I've been stolen from, I've been abused by black people. Then must I now go out and hate black people? You see, your mm -hmm. argument doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Workers, employers will abuse you. They are racist in the Indian community. They are racist in the black community. They are idiots everywhere. Are you willing to say that an entire community must be uh, painted because of your bad experience? That was my say, uh, Chantal. What do you say about someone who, who says that about the Indian community? Mm -hmm. Understand that a lot of black people feel that way. I'm a, I, I, I accept that. A lot of them feel yeah. that way because of their experiences. We are now trying to express ourselves from my, our, what I did. The floor is yours. No, oh, definitely. And I think um, everyone has some kind of bad experience, but you can't take that one experience now and, as you said, um, apply that to every other person or every other you know, race group or whatever it is. You cannot play that, uh, that, 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 that race card. It's, we live in, in a democratic country now. We, we're behind that. We, we passed that, uh, that, that decade of feeling that way towards each other. And, uh, and, and as I said, we, we don't, when we hear these things, um, we shouldn't be fueling these things. And, um, and you know, um, uh, that he must see that we're angry or we, we, we're not, I'm absolutely not angry, um, about any, any person that's, or any race group that, that, that participated in whatever happened or aggravated what happened. Um, we, as I said, we've, 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 we've learned to make peace with it and we want to move forward from here. Um, I think it's, it's very important that, that we do that because a lot of that is still embedded in our minds and our minds play a very important role of how we perceive things. Um, and with that, 
um, you know, is everything else, the social media, the newspaper, um, whatever's been written, whatever's in articles that, that's, that's coming out and, and fueling that, uh, that feeling, which is um, rolling out in uh, what we're experiencing now with our families okay, that, gonna, are, that are in uh, By the way, tomorrow I'm, 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 I'm appearing at the, and I hope I get to appear there if I'm well enough, at the, uh, one of the human rights, the CRL Commission, where our side of the story is being told or the other people's versions. And I'm going to come out with this thing about the innocent people coming to, that's, a, that's, the, that's the, 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 the narrative I want to, I want to place out, my fear in the area and all of that. Uh, I'm appearing before that uh, commission. I was going to tell you something else and I lost my train of thought because I went on to the second point there. Uh, I think uh, someone like SJM Kize, what I love about my platform is a lot of black people are watching, some are haters, but I think when they watch, they learn as well a lot about us. In fact, they see some chutias as well. We got our own chutias. Let me say to the other black guys watching, as you got black chutias, we got Indian chutias as well, make stupid comments, and we can't control them. Chutias exist everywhere. But Chantel, I just want to also say for the likes of Mr. Mkizo, Mr. Mkizo, this thing, this issue of July and what happened must also take into context what happened in 1945, eh? the original unrest. Where yeah. the black community turned against the Indian community, and that was devastating. There were numerous deaths, rapes, and all of that that happened. It was a dark, dark day in our history. 1949, what is 1949, right? 1949, yeah, yeah. 1949. And I want Muslim Kiza or Muslim Kiza to go and Google that, understand it that in our history of 160 years here, this is the third uprising against the Indian community. 1949, 1985, and now. Three times that we have been risen up against by the black community, incited by other people to do it. Same thing happened, they were incited to rise, and you rise against us. And now maybe you can see it in the context of what's happening that when it started again and the messages started coming through, a lot of us were filled with the same thing. We don't want the same thing to happen. Is that should that not come as a factor in terms of all of this, uh, Shita? No, definitely. I think, as I said, it's 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 um, you know, we we must re we must reflect on the past, but we we won't we should refuse to dwell on it. Um, but at the same time, we we've learned we've learned that we've overcome that we've overcome that over numerous years. Um, we in a point now where we we where we're much more educated. <coughs> We've got choices to make in terms of how we behave towards a certain group or a certain community. And personally, you know, as a family of the accused as well, you can see I hold no bitterness to anybody. You know, all I want is justice for my family. And I think that's a very fair ask. It's a very, very fair ask. Um, we, it's one constitution. It applies to everybody equally. It doesn't mean you have a higher you know, preference than another person. It should never, it should never be that case. Then it means that something horrible has gone wrong and we should be asking ourselves why. So anyways, we've been uh, over an hour and 12 minutes, 15 minutes. We will end it here. Uh, I just want to say thank you for you for coming on. Not I mean, this is the second interview I've had with someone who was a family member of the Qs to be able to bring out the story. I saw an attorney, Chris Gounder, who's representing most of the families. Chris Gounder has been relatively silent to me, give me, yet today I see that he's got a nice long uh, statement to the post. So I'm saying this live. I called him today and maybe you can call him out. Why not bring Chris Gounder onto this platform so he can explain to us what is happening so we all have a better understanding. Uh, he, he's made a statement in the media, so he's not hiding anything. He's even come out and said that the accused are being prejudiced and they're not being treated in the right way. So he said it. So I would like to invite him formally if he's listening to his platform or someone takes it out to bring Chris Counter. By the way, guys, Chris Counter is the first attorney who came on board to help the accused. He's offered most of his services pro bono, as we know. He's representing most of the accused. He's being the one on the front line most of the time. Um, so yeah, we want to bring him on the platform and be able to... What do you, what do you think of that, Shanta? I think it's brilliant. Um, as I said, we all are learning. We all are not lawyers, advocates, and people of the law. And um, we, you know, and, and, and clearly it would, um, you know, it would, sh it would shine a lot of light on what's going on. You know, clearly these kind of discussions, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a matter of um, 
it's it's bringing out the truth kc and we've been silent for far too long and something that silence so. starts to, it starts to kill you on the inside so you might as well just speak and let everybody hear what's in what's in our hearts you know we we falling apart and um, very soon we're just going to crumble if this thing carries on the way it does um sometimes you feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel you feel like we've exhausted every single option um you know like we actually made to feel that we horrible like we horrible people together with our loved ones and our families and um you know i've it's it, it's just it's just so much guys it's just so much um you know and as i said we we you know if you want to talk to us we open to talking to you you know we've got nothing to hide um but we want our appeal our appeals to fall on the on the right ears and i really wish the people that need to hear this i hearing this um you know it's it's a, it's a real matter it's a true i feel it's a true humanitarian crisis that's really going on right now um no it is um, indeed and, and as you said from the yeah, beginning yeah. from the onset nobody really wanted to talk about it most people were afraid in fact there was pressure was put on uh on the family not to talk so i think now which i've said to others you are hiding to nothing you rather talk now you know you're not going to make your family any better or any worse they've they've been through the worst i think now things are getting a little better because of the public uh input but i think in the first couple of weeks they had it the hardest so i think now i would encourage the family to come out and talk give their experiences share their experiences with the world no because by keeping quiet the world is not getting to know what it is uh, shantel it's been a pleasure having you i'm going to give you the final shot uh, you can have the parting shot um we've got people listening to us what would you like to say to them um how would you like to go forward so the next minute or so is yours thank you so much kesi i think this was um you know it was it was a it was um a good one where we get to just um you know you know talk about it and as you and and as you believe that talking about things uh, makes everything so much better and um i think um you know we as a we as a community can overcome this there's obviously in every community there will be people that don't agree with with other people's opinions you're entitled to your own opinion and at the same time um when opinions come into play um use um your reasoning use your logic uh in not necessarily everything that you see in the newspaper and the media is true so um that would be my my um you know final comment um to everybody and um to the families um of the accused um be strong we will get through this um i think they there's definitely um um you know people are, are seeing the light in this it's just going to be a matter of time now and um people will hear our pleas people are going to eventually know the truth it's just a matter of time um but community members stick with us stick with us till the end you know i think that 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 you know it it doesn't mean that you have to financially contribute or whatever it is but that emotional support uh, even from some of the families that we're getting extended families we um it 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 really helps to to get through uh, whatever we're going through so thank you very much okay thank you shandel and we'll say goodbye to you we'll speak to you again soon bye thank you bye but right, there we go guys that was uh, shantel she's uh, been wanting to come on for a while but was uh i did contact her like a, over a month back and she was not very comfortable coming online uh and uh she she was afraid she was afraid of being victimized by the neighbors victimized by people victimized by the police it was just really a scary time abel maket was a regular as a july incident needs prayers it was a satanic activity got to our society myself as a cosa person i have lots of indian family friends thank you thank you by the way abel maket 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 ketiwa ketiwa the great right abel Uh, thank you for your comment thank you for watching uh, and all the other trolls and i'm talking specifically to the black african trolls i know you come on whenever there's something you don't like then you come and call us racist and whatever but when there's good things being said and then there's sound things being said then you just park down you keep you keep quiet but when something you feel is racist then you come out and then you're just attacking everybody left right and center but when there's a good discussion happening you don't come out and say anything that just speaks to your mindset are you a 30% or what are you that makes you but stupid that makes you gullible that makes you 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 don't have value to society we having we are having a good discussion here i know you're trolling i know you're watching i know you because you watch everything else i do so come out and say something come out and say okay oh ask a question like um kize was asking a question sj kize was was expressing how will we know how you feel or what you what your concern 
if you don't express yourself. When I express myself, I express what I am feeling. You can't tell me my feeling is wrong. You can't tell me how to feel. You can't tell me I'm wrong to feel that way. It's my feeling. If you feel a certain way, like SJM Kiza said, he feels Indian people abused him, ill-treated him, that is his lived experience. I can't change it. I can change the pattern for the future or try to make him understand future. But that's his lived experience. His, <clears throat> you, you cannot take it away from him. <clears throat> and everybody has their own lived experience. The Phoenix issue, the families that were there on the street, in the houses, you can't tell me what it felt like. You can't sit in Johannesburg, Northwest, Cape Town and tell what happened there in KZN and what happened in the area there. But you're too quick to pass judgment when you weren't there. You don't know what it was. So Chantal should take a bow. Yes, Chantal did very well. I was wanting to have her on. I knew she was a speaker. I knew she knew what she was talking about. And I wanted to have, have her on for a long time. And it, they, they were just too, too afraid. I've been in the crux of this. Uh, since the outset with, with the family members, trying to get them. By the way, at the moment, I think my small task team have the most composite list of the accused and the families and from, from almost everybody. We have the most composite list. Guys, what we are doing at the moment, the family do need hampers, the family do need help. I'm not doing hampers because it's just taking too much of my time. My task team is the following. We're doing all the work. My task team is myself, uh, Keshli Solai, Nazira, Feroza, and uh, Devon and uh, so what am I forgetting? Keshni, Nazira, Ashita, and Ashita, the mentioner. Ashita is from Australia, by the way. Ashita is from Australia. So there's six of us, four ladies and two guys. That's the team. That's the team that's doing all this work. And by the way, the last couple of days, I've been getting a lot of shit because apparently. I took the money, I'm a dictator, I'm unlawful, I'm not giving out the money, they need hampers. So some politicians and some key players in the area are saying to the family, well, go to KC, he's raising the money, go and ask him. I want to say to those fucking chutmaris, piss off, don't, don't cause division and don't cause shit. So we decided that we're going to raise the funds and keep the funds. Because guys, just now, these guys, when they get afforded bail, 25, 29 people how, at, at about four or 5,000 in a pot, what is that going to be? How much money is that? And can a normal person living in a normal council house in Phoenix afford what they've been going through without a breadwinner to, to afford this bail? So we've taken a strategic decision not to hand out hampers, not to use the money, to sort of hold on to the money so that when bail comes, it's hard for people to understand now because they want to pay their lights and water. They want to pay, they want to buy food. They need nappies. They need baby food. <laughs> and because the breadwinners are not there. And we are saying, hold on, we can't give you this money. And then some people are saying, oh, well, who are you raising this money for? What are you doing with the money? Why can't you give it? Well, you see, I can tell you right now, at the end of this, with all the effort I did, for all the things that I thought I did right, I will still be shut on. I will still be shut on. I will still be mocked. I will still be told things. And when somebody said to me, but why are you doing it? I said, well, I know it's going to happen anyway. It's happening right now in, in Phoenix. The Karo Charo is raising money. Why is it giving the money? <coughs> it's happening right now. And when somebody asked me to go clear the air and put it, I said, why? Why did I need to go do that? It's okay. Whether I put the post out, whether I don't put the post out, people are still going to talk about me. People are still going to have an issue with me. So people are still going to do the money. It's still going to happen. So it's part of the cost. So. Let's leave it at that. My body is uh, <laughs> quite hot now. Throat is sore. Thank you guys for watching and thanks for the support. Thanks to uh, Chantal <coughs> for coming on and supporting and giving us the uh, version. Um, and uh, yeah. Action Sync says 5,000 for me. Thank you so much. Guys. If you can't contribute, please WhatsApp me 073 767 5836. Join the group. 
uh, yeah, if you can contribute, join the Phoenix Weekend and WhatsApp me or inbox here. We'll post the bank details and you can contribute. All the money is so far going to, is going to go towards the bail just to get these guys out. It's not even a trial, by the way. It's not even a tennis fees. Just to get them out on bail. And uh, yeah, let's take it from there. So um, thank you for watching. Hopefully I can have a sleep. Um, I've got a cold toasted sandwich now uh, to have. I think I'll have it now. Hmm. Cold. I'm warming the microwave. <laughs>